Welcome to this week's edition of The Passion of the Digital Artist. And here he is, that passionate, tradigital artist himself, Jeff Mueller! Boom! Way to go, Xavier! How are ya? I'm great, Jeff. How are you? Oh, super excited. Man, that got me pumped up. That was a good one. That's like, wow, it's kind of, you know, kind of... Being a little bit uh, mellow tonight, but all of a sudden you hit one out of the park. So. Well, hey, <laughs> now maybe we, if we don't put everybody else to sleep with the rest of our blog, we'll be doing good. <laughs> yes. So That's what's sure. going on, Jeff? What do you want to talk about well, today? Well, this week, because so much is going on and what I'm doing, but it, it doesn't have to do with the normal special kind of, there's not one specific thing. What I wanted to do is go over and review all the stuff that I'm doing because I read a lot uh, running the Computer Art Man uh, webpage lately. I've been putting a lot of time and effort into that. And I do a lot of research on digital art and computer art and what's the difference and everything going on like that. And based off that, what, what I've been finding out is that there's a lot of information, misinformation, uh, correct information, uh, and people take things towards, you know, as far as digital and computer art, and really, it's kind of got me pumped up. But one of the things is, is I always see artists questioning the internet. You know, they question, does an artist need a website? Does an artist need to do this on the internet? Does is you know, does the artist need to be at a place where, you know, and and the answer is, yes, the art. You need to have a presence on the internet and at the least amount your website at a place where they Squarespace is a good place. There's there's a there's a bunch of different websites that host templates and as it, it, you need to get your stuff into the template and at least have it as a reference point so that if you're talking to somebody on the street and you can give them a business card you don't have a lot of time tell them to check out your website so they can at least see your work that is the least you need to do now how far you take it from there is just how savvy you want to go uh, I know that the traditional means of selling arts through representatives and through galleries the gallery can represent you and everything that that there are some artists who get into niches and that these are the artists that question whether or not you need to have a website now as far as the other aspects of being on the internet you can do as much or the little as it is as you want but it's it's there's so many different sites that sell art fine art america i mean there's just there's there's probably a hundred different places in my research that i've been finding and that's what i'm going to be doing in the next couple couple months coming up with where you should be parking I, right now the main place i'm parked is at art specifier art specifier uh was a jury process and i got in there and I've been working hard as far as getting my portfolio up there and working, sending people to the site. I they, I was interviewed. You can check out my interview on uh, YouTube on the Art Specifier site. It's still on the front page. Go right there, artspecifier.com, see my interview. But the key to this is, and I am trying to set down the blueprint of what you need to do. This is something that I've gone from a fairly, uh, well, I'm a talented artist, but I started my fine art career and I started using social media at the same time, coming from commercial art, then being out of it and then wanting to create my own artwork because of technology has allowed me to use my digital skills and my traditional art skills to create a unique brand of art. And then I've been branding it ever since. Now these video blogs are part of being on the internet and me and Xavier uh, Sunday night we're here almost every Sunday night doing this yes we are we're t you know we're at a hundred and thirty some video blogs and based off of being doing this many I've become a much better public speaker there's no doubt about it I've been able to learn how to explain myself these talents are transferring into the traditional world of art too so 
now that I get close and I'm trying to get into, let's say, a gallery, when, when the gallery owner talks to me, I can explain my artwork thoroughly and not go off on a tangent or feel uncomfortable or undecided about what I'm going to tell them. I'm, I'm confident and I'm going to be able to speak and, and communicate with that owner exactly how I want to do it. So that's just one thing this this type of the the internet and and video blogging has done but let's just review really quick i have jeff jeff Mueller digital art which is also computer art man so www.computerartman.com or www.jeffmuellerdigitalart.com both the same website i i did this because jeff Mueller digital art explains what i do so in search engines it all can be found and then I linked computerartman.com which is really easy to tell somebody how to get there if I if you do www.jeffmuller.com you know digitalart.com it's something that someone won't remember but everybody remembers all you have to do is say just go to computerartman.com www.com so I did that then that site is for my fine art career you can my my main my social media multimedia series which is Definitely museum quality fine art, and that's what I load there. And also my cityscape, which is a gallery quality fine art. So those pieces are there, and I talk about it all the time. Now, there's some pop art that transfers into it a little bit, but not a lot. It just kind of shows that I do other things. Now, the other website I run is computerartmarket.com. Now, computerartmarket.com basically will sell everything and anything. My Computer Art Man website is connected there. So if you want to buy a piece off of com uh, Computer Art Man or Jeff Mueller, did, it will, you will do the purchase at com the Computer Art Market. But the Computer Art Market as a whole markets everything that I do. I was an airbrush artist early on, and I've got airbrush art posters. I've got prints. I've got metal prints. All my artwork that you can find, all of it, is for sale on the computer art market. I'm working on getting t-shirts and magnets and just overall the whole marketing aspect of what art can be online, I'm pushing there, separate from, the, from my fine art career. Then I'm on Facebook. On Facebook, I'm on my personal account, Jeffrey Mueller. A lot of people follow me on Facebook, but it's friends and family. I've created the computer art man Facebook page and that page I really push hard digital and computer art and what it is I find other people's artworks I find museums I find and I basically promote daily myself and computer art and digital art then I have the digital art university group that if someone shows interest I invite them into the group and I want to have the group basically talking about and posting uh, cool things about digital art. So then the last thing I have is the computer art market. That That is a Facebook page. I haven't started to develop fully yet. It's there. People can check it out. But it's also on Facebook. If people visit it, they can get a link to the computer art market. So that one I haven't fully done. Now, I'm on Twitter. I, I tweet all the time. I use Twitter to drive tra traffic to all my websites. Twitter is being used all the time. I've got 5,500, almost 5,600 followers on Twitter. Now, Twitter is unique where a lot of people do what I call a spam follow, but a spam follow is not what I do. I only follow back people who follow me, and I don't follow back people who don't, that aren't legitimate. Uh, for instance, people are trying to sell me Twitter followers. Don't follow them back. I don't follow back people who are doing pornographic stuff. It's just regular people who are interested in me, businesses that are interested in me and whatnot, or artists that are in. So those are those 5,500 people, I then ask if I can send them updates so I'm not spam myself. So if I do a video blog like this, I have a list of 725 people every week that I send a personal update that I've just video blogged. It's a lot of work. So you can see how much work. Now, there's a last step. I've just or opened an Etsy store. The Etsy store I am using to sell, I'm going to focus on uh, projects that 
link each other together. And I'm going to be selling digital prints, metal prints, and then canvases. And the digital prints are going to be the photography. I just went to Zion. I took a bunch of photography when I went to Zion. And I have a lot of great shots. I'm going to do a painting or two from Zion. I haven't done it yet, but I've already done one painting, Sedimentary Uplift. That will also be there. So that is going to be the prize as far as on Etsy right now as far as the painting. And then all the photographs that complement it will be available in digital print and paper print. So I'm going to try and do some focusing and really do some marketing directly towards Southwest Art mountains zion national park and i'm i keyword it i do everything it needs to do and we're going to see how that happens now that i've opened the etsy store so that's kind of how i'm going to use that so you can see on a weekly basis i've got a crap ton of stuff to do just to keep that running and then i'm also creating artwork all along so I just wanted to review everything that i had been going i mean that i also do a couple other social media outlets but I'm looking into Pinterest and LinkedIn and the, I have accounts there also so you got to kind of pick and choose where what you're gonna do based off your amount of time but as I get closer and closer to becoming a full-time artist where instead of half-time job and half time and, and both full-time jobs but putting the hours in the sink where I put full time into art and I'm working really hard to get there it's my goal I want to do it I still have my whole plan and goals are still intact we're really close to this year's goals and we'll talk about that coming up in the future holy, excellent holy shit i talked a lot that's a lot <laughs> uh, the, the the short uh, answer to the original question too was you know whether you're going to become a full-time artist and run you know art will be your career or you want extra revenue if you, you know, if you're an art, artist for the sake of artist, well, being an artist, maybe you don't need the internet. But if you're hoping to, in any way, for whatever reason, monetize your effort, I can't think of any other way than to utilize and leverage the way Jeff is doing the internet. Everything. You got to leverage everything. I can't imagine, you know, if you're going to monetize something, by definition, you become a business and I can't imagine any business not utilizing the internet in this day and age. Not the tools that it, you know, art right now is in its, as far as the internet is in its infant stages. There's a lot of artists on the internet, but people are just starting to realize that they can, they can buy it and start to trust artists on the internet. And that's where it's in its infant stages. So that's just awesome. Excellent, Jeff. Anything else for this week? That I think is it. Enough. <laughs> I wanted to add one thing about another form of art. My wife and I went to Pittsburgh this week to see Fleetwood Mac in concert with the return of Christine McVie. And it is awesome. If you can get to that concert in a city near you, I highly recommend it. They hit it out of the park. What an awesome time.